Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have already been having an absolutely delightful conversation with Veronica Maldonado, who you're going to get to meet here in a second. Let me introduce you to Veronica. She was raised in Venezuela, educated in the U.S., worked in Japan, the U.S., and Venezuela, is currently the board chair of two of her family businesses, and is advisor and head of coaching for Generation 6 Family Enterprise Advisors. She knows what it is to build, to lose, and to reconfigure your business to start fresh and start new. She knows that reliance, self-responsibility, and coaching is the name of the game. Veronica, I am already delighted to meet you. I'm like, at this point now, like you're my friend and I get to introduce you to the room. And I'm like, this is this is my best friend who I've known for, for 20 minutes, Veronica. So Veronica, <sighs> to meet you and thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you so much, Kevin. It's wonderful to be here and to meet you. And I've also greatly enjoyed our conversation. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's let's go back, not to the very beginning, not that I was born in 19, blah, 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 blah. But let's go back to the beginning of you as a coach. How did you... How did you get your start as a coach? How did you realize that coaching was either what you were already doing, what you wanted to be doing? And then how did that evolve into your coaching practice today? Well, most assuredly, not the direct way. It wasn't a straight <laughs> line to coaching. I kind of, I guess I I stumbled in it. So <laughs> I, I, you, you had mentioned before when we were talking that many times coaches have been doing it for a long time and didn't really realize it until somebody else pointed it out and said, hey, you know, have you ever considered this? And that's something similar to what happened to me. Hmm. I have been, uh, all, all, you know, my group of people in business and friends, they've always called me and be like, hey, what do you think about this? Or I'm, I'm struggling with this or, and anywho, I, uh, when we formed Generation Six, which is a family enterprise advising firm, my partner said, we would like you to be the head of coaching. And I said, absolutely, bring it on. This is awesome. And I've loved it. It has given me the opportunity to connect with lots of people at a deeper level. And it has been absolutely a delightful, um, for me, uh, point in my, in my own self-development and evolution as I work with others. It's funny how, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because it, it's, it proves to be true so frequently and it's easy to forget how when you commit to connecting with people and serving them and helping them, how much you get out of it. Like it's, 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 you almost don't want to think about it too much because then you start to feel like you're, you start to feel selfish where you're just like, I'm getting so much from this conversation, from this relationship, from this service. It's like, I almost don't want to, I don't want to say because I want to stay focused on the service and focused on the work, but it's true. It's so, it's so rewarding. Absolutely. And you know, Kevin, I'm so happy you mentioned it because yes, it is selfish. And so what we do, I do get a great deal out of it. And it's not fully altruistic. I do. <laughs> I really, uh, that, that whole idea that you can connect to another person, and that you can add value to their lives or whatever it is. And at the same time, it nurtures yours. Yes, it's a little bit, it's a little bit self serving and selfish. And I'm proud of it. Yeah, it's it's not a but, that's an and. Cause it's like I feel like something that gets it's very easy to get lost in the sauce, especially when you're when you're service oriented, when you're of a, of, a, of a giving mind and a giving heart, and you've oriented your life in that way. the The art of being of service is both in the giving and the receiving, and there's there's a grace to be had there. And it's that even even in the way in which you receive the benefits of your relationship with someone, even as you're coaching them or you're mentoring them or you're guiding them, that also serves the person you're trying to serve as well because they see how much they're contributing to you and that gives them satisfaction and joy and it's like it's there's there's such a a beautiful art to it i get quite taken with both the the work itself and also just the way it's very much like a dance like a beautiful lovely dance you are you're in with somebody and sometimes they're leading and most sometimes you're leading and it's just it's just quite lovely i get i'm quite taken with it <laughs> yes and it's also honest mm -hmm. it's not it's really uh, is yes it's honest and in my case, I'm very much a great believer and also in my firm in Generation 6 and Candor. So mm -hmm. uh, when we do, when I do coaching uh, or when I start with somebody, I it's this is like always a two-way street. It's not, oh, I'm so wonderful and I'm going to be Philip, I'm going to give you. No, I'm starting exactly where I am with my, with my life experience and I'm going to completely share it with you. So I have a full on and a new appreciation for doing things that also uh, are for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, 
let's let's pivot and just like talk a little bit more about about what things look like for you today with Generation Six. And I like to, I kind of like to ask this question almost interrogation style, sort of like a "What did you know and when did you know it?" sort of thing. It's like who do you coach and how do you coach them? And the who is fairly obvious, but like sometimes you can talk about like you coach people at certain stages in their development. Um, I know that readiness and fit is always a very important part of the coaching relationship. Maybe you coach people in particular industries um, or at particular levels, whether it's like sort of career development or you know, C-suite navigation or you know, all sorts of stuff in between. So there's the who and then there's the how, which is basically all the all the basic ways in which you can coach someone one to one group coaching, whether that's small group or like masterminds or whether that's larger groups that all the way up to like keynotes or coaching entire organizations. Um coursework, books, you know, all of the above. So basically, who do you coach and how do you coach them today? You know, you said something that I absolutely believe in before I before I tell you who and what, which is it's a match. I always when I mm. first we always I always give a sample session because one of the most important things is a free sample session because it's are we a match? Do we connect? Do you feel comfortable with me? Do I feel comfortable with you? Um, mm -hmm. Do you accept me? And do I accept you, right? Because it's like a double, as we were speaking before, it's a two-way street. So mm -hmm. since I am um, in Generation 6, which is a family enterprise advisor, usually the people I coach are within the family business environment. So family business owners, uh, next generation, uh, older generations. It could be any of the generations, next gens, first gens, <laughs> now gens. Um, and I also work with some of the executives that work within the family business area or family offices. So it's usually either the family member or the family business executive. And like I said, the range is quite, the age range is quite wide. Uh, and for me, the most important thing whenever I do the initial coaching session is are we going to really move this ball forward together? Because as a coach, uh, obviously, I'm not going to do anything for you other than help you find the solutions that most of the times we already already have within, right? That's and it right. just needs a little guidance, a little direction so that we can, from within, bring out the answers that are in there. And you mentioned self-responsibility. That is the keynote of my coaching style. I start with there, it starts with you and from you um, strengthening your core, your center and from there out. Um, so I work a lot with, uh, what are your triggers? Okay, <laughs> well, you know, and like in the case of family business, my father said this and this and that and that, okay. Your father could have said, but what about you? So bring it always back to the person <laughs> so that you feel that you have some control over your life, even though it might seem you do not. <laughs> it's often a matter of perspective in that regards when you feel out of control it might be because you're trying to control things that are inherently uncontrollable and you're not focusing on the things you can control <laughs> Absolutely. There's, that, there's that responsibility coming in when all of a sudden if you can, if you actually can control it and not just complain about it then you have some responsibility to start taking and that's that could be a little scary and it's nice to have someone there next to you being like no it's okay this is this is the way to do it just guiding Letting you find that power, find that control, find that responsibility and find that direction that you need. It's, I, lo I love that you emphasize that right at the, up at the top of where you're not coming in. You're not coming in to tell somebody what to do. You're not coming in with a prescription. You're not coming in. I mean, obviously, you have a lot of experience, and that's extremely valuable, helping someone like find their path and guide their way forward. But most, if not all, of what someone needs is already there. They just need a little bit of help to see it and to get access to it and start working with it. And that's that's right where you come in. I love it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And the other thing I've learned is that um, the importance of a neutral safe space where the person can come in. So mm -hmm. as a coach, it's very important that I'm very present so that I can respond to the situation at the moment of whatever the coachee needs, but that mm -hmm. I don't occupy the space. Because ultimately, it's not about me, it's about them. So even though I might be getting a lot of it, it's not about <laughs> me or my concerns or me pushing an agenda. I'm very, very careful to really create a safe, open, neutral space where the person can come in and fill it with whatever it is that they're trying to figure out and us working it through together. 
But again, always from the place of it starts with me. Mm -hmm. Whatever is happening, whatever reaction, look at it from, okay, what can I do? Because you said something super important is which sometimes we think, oh, no, this is totally out of my control. And what do I do? And we drown, we get distracted, or we don't see. But there's a lot of things that are within our control. And let's focus on that. So true. And I, I love I love the emergence of the concept of holding space, which is something that's like, that's, not, that's a phrase that's, you know, as, as I've been moving through my 20s and my 30s and my well into my 40s, that's a that's a term that has become much more understood and understandable. And I love it because I, I feel like I was looking for that for a while in my younger years, where it's like, it's, it's kind of what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to talk about it, where you just, you need that space to be open and you need to be present in that space. And it's like, it, it's like at first it's like, how do that seem, those seem contradictory. I didn't have a, a framework of understanding and that whole concept of holding space really unlocked a lot for me personally. Um, and I know for a lot of other people about just how to, how to show up for people in certain circumstances and what your role really is, not to, not to interfere or to intercede, but to again, hold that space and be present and allow the people who are there, the people that you're with, that you're guiding to come in and fill it and do the work they need to do that they're desperate for some space for. And I, I love <laughs> New Jersey Italian myself. So big, big family, very noisy family, lots of family businesses here, there and everywhere. And I got to tell you, and actually this is, this has been, been a topic on the show quite a bit in the last, in the last year, I would say, a lot of coaches are focusing on intergenerational communication. And this is, you know, this is just in general, but also I, I feel like this, this pays off even more so in the family business and the family environment, because we have, we really do have four generations active in the workplace right now that are of very different types of mentalities. And they come up from very different places and the ability to communicate amongst yourselves, to effectively communicate not just personally, but professionally to be able to get things done without family stuff rearing its ugly head. That's just, it's, I love, I, I, I'm particularly loving coaches that are focused on that because I feel like there's, there's a big gap there that needs a lot of attention. And there's a lot of great impact to be had in helping the generations communicate with each other, especially within a family and a family environment, a family relationship. I feel like I'm pre I might be speaking your language here because you're you're shaking your head with this smile on your face like oh you're you're preaching to the choir here buddy. <laughs> no, it's just that you hit the nail on the head, you know. One of the biggest issues is talking to be able to talk especially about okay, so think of a family business, right? Everything that's like the most tender aspects of ourselves, the love, mm -hmm. the love for family, the most explosive aspects of ourselves, money. <laughs> It's like, it's like made for TV, right? You have money, you have emotion, you have assets, you have family, it's all in one pot and you have to figure it out. At the same time, you have enter generations, you have one generation, the, the founder that thinks so differently from the siblings, that thinks so differently from the children, from the cousins. How do you communicate with each other? How do you find your way? Some families, um, the the brand of the family uh, is so strong, you know, I, I don't know, hmm. like, well, you're, you know, uh, the, the the mafia that not not that you're in the mafia but, but, but no the, but yeah. that feel that you belong to this to this community to this this clique mm -hmm. and it's like how do you find your own identity how do you tell your your parents or your father or your grandfather hey I I'm I love the business but I want to do this or let's explore that or I don't want to work in the business or all these prickly subjects or I didn't agree when my brother took I don't know whatever from the business and you didn't say anything I don't know whatever uh -huh. <laughs> it just touches on all these tender spots on ourselves um so yes I I was smiling why you know with a big <laughs> smile because I I hear you I hear you <laughs> loud and clear and it is fascinating I really do love it because when these families do begin to communicate with each other and the mm -hmm. families beginning to communicate, you have the power of love within a family and you harness that. And these family businesses really do become unstoppable, great forces in the community for employment, for the family members development, for, for it's just a really rippling effect that I find really inspiring. Yeah, it's a rising tide that raises all boats, which is how I feel about coaching as well. <laughs> That's awesome. I, like I said, I knew we've, we've been talking, we've been talking for a while. And since I hit record, we've already had a over 15 minute conversation. We're, we're going to do what I promised we would do. We're going to leave them wanting more. 
But before <laughs> I let you go, this is this has been fascinating. First of all, I'm having you back on. I'm I'm, I'm gonna give give some time for this episode to air and get out there, and then maybe come summertime, maybe like July or August or whatever, I will have you back on. We're gonna keep this up because I. I can already tell I would love talking with you more. So I'm just, I'm just going to selfishly just say, I'm going to, I'm going to slide into your LinkedIn DMS and be like, you want to come back on the show? (laughs) Number one, number two, where can people right now find out more about who you are and what you do? Where can people like get to know more about generation six, about you as a coach and also where is the best place for people to connect with you and start a conversation? Oh, it could either be generation six.com, which is our webpage. And there you'll find my, my smiling face and a non-flattering <laughs> picture, which I don't like. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> joke, joke, joke. Uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile, Veronica Maldonado, uh, Generation okay. 6. There's a lot of Veronica Maldonados, as I found out. So it might just I be noticed that to today. Me. It might be easier to find me through my company. I'll put the link to that to your profile in the show notes um, oh, for this episode. So, so it'll be easy. It'll be easy to find. One click. So, Yeah. Thank you, Veronica. This has been fantastic. Yeah. This is subject matter that I really, I mean, I'm I'm passionate generally about coaching, which I yeah, exposed to you a little bit before I hit record, where I just got got going in my hands, started coming up into the Zoom window and just like I'm gesturing wildly, getting excited. But I'm also really, I'm really passionate about your focus on family businesses and intergenerational communication. And just again, you you nailed you hit the nail right on the head how just how valuable it is for the family, for the community, for the world. And there's just, there's, there's good guidance to be, to be done there and good service to be done and good space to be held there. So I'm just, thanks for being on the show today with me selfishly. And thanks for doing what you do. And I'm, I'm going to get you again. I promise. Thank you for doing what you do selfishly. <laughs> That's our pleasure. I guess it. My pleasure. Your pleasure. Our pleasure. Yeah. We're just, we're just, help, we're just helping out again, that rising tide. <laughs> Uh, okay. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you to the audience for listening, by the way. I hope you had, if you had half as good of a time as I did, you had a great time. So thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you again here very soon.